Good afternoon everyone. Hope you are doing very well. Here I am again with another lecture on subject VLSI. Today I plan to discuss uh, CAD flow, electronic design automation, uh, CAD flow for digital uh, integrated circuits. Uh, this is uh, very fundamental and uh, important uh, to understand uh, today's semiconductor uh, ICs or we call them system on a chip design is, uh, is mainly it's the job of EDA tools. Essentially an engineer has to handle those tools and uh, that's it. Um, so it's, it becomes important uh, roughly 60 percent, 60 to 70 percent time is spent uh, handling different EDA tools, CAD flows and, and so on. Um, so let's see what we learned today. Uh, in the beginning you don't have anything, a uh, marketing person comes and uh, you, your system designer, architect, they you know decide what set of features we want for that particular IC. Uh, basically you have, you are at the system level, very abstract level, you have some design idea. So what uh, in simple sense uh, is done is that you convert to that, that description which is at system level um, to a little lower level you convert it convert it into uh, algorithmic form or write uh, system C models and uh, try to simulate the system how does it work. Now typically many things in whole IC design process are done uh, in parallel like you have a system design team who are doing you know um, performance analysis of the system you know um, their responsibility is mainly to interface with the user requirement and what we can implement. So we are at you know algorithmic level and then um, that's fine we, we have now well-defined algorithm to execute that process. Um, what do we do next? We write uh, or we convert that algorithmic description uh, into a register transfer level representation. We write VHDL or Verilog code and uh, synthesizable code. I need to mention here because you can write code which may not be synthesizable. Uh, synthesizable means here that uh, your code when um, you give it to a logic synthesis tool uh, should be ab able to be converted to logic gates or in terms of uh, the transfer of information between registers. And what you do, you do verification whether your um, algorithmic behavior matches with your RTL behavior. So there is this uh, different team um, other than the design team whose responsibility is to, to create test benches, um, write test cases, um, identify um, you know what sort of uh, uh, functional test cases we can have for, for that uh, design and assist uh, designers to write uh, uh, better code or well I shouldn't say better code but help in the design process to find out bugs if there are bugs then the designer can go change the code so that you know you get a more refined circuit. It's very interesting here um, in industry there is a roughly ratio of 1 is to 4 if there is a one designer um, then four verification engineers typically are needed to um, sort of you know write different test cases uh, to do full verification. So in, in simple terms think about uh, the verification effort is, is huge here. Um, so roughly 50 to 60 percent time is spent in verification and as the chip becomes more complex um, complexity of the verification and design also increases. Now what do we do now? We have uh, RTL code, simple, we just convert it into logic gates. 
So what we do, we for example, we use Synopsys Design Compiler to convert the RTL description into logic gates. Now there may be many variants, okay, we want to do low power synthesis, we want to do timing aware synthesis, we want to target these cell libraries, we want to target 14 uh, nanometer FinFET technology, 7 nanometer FinFET technology, what not. So those come uh, into picture, but the basic idea here is that we convert the RTL description into logic synthesis description, uh, into logic gate, sorry. Um, so that process is called logic synthesis. And then when your tool, say design compiler tool converts uh, the RTL description into logic gates, so your description is changed. So essentially how you will want to make sure that there is no functional change when there is a change in uh, abstraction from RTL to logic gates. There are tools in the industry uh, which make sure that uh, both design descriptions at logic gate level, at RTL level, they both are equivalent. So you run different tools and you prove the equivalence between both uh, design descriptions. And if you find any, any um, sort of issue that okay my RTL doesn't match with, with my um, netlist or uh, logic synthesized netlist then uh, you find out the reason why it doesn't do whether did I write proper RTL code or tool is doing something which is not supposed to do. So a bunch of things you investigate and then if needed you change the RTL and you do the redo the logic synthesis. At the same time, uh, well, these operations can be uh, sort of parallelized that once you have first level, first cut or first version of RTL, you, you, uh, logic synthesis team is uh, doing, you know, their job um, converting the RTL description to, to gates and uh, doing bunch of checks like timing, power at RTL level, logic optimization and was so on. You can use prime time for timing analysis, uh, Apache for Apache tool sets for uh, RTL power and so on. And if you find that okay we are, we are exceeding the limit or we can't match up our timing, um, our timing budget or area budget is not appropriate then you go back to the RTL team and say guys uh, we have a problem here, um, change the RTL or do something else. Good. Now, once you are confident and you have your uh, logic gate netlist which is stable enough, uh, which is within the, your timing budget and uh, within your area budget and within your power budget, then you are confident. You give, uh, you did all checks that okay, uh, we have verified, you know, we are satisfied with, with our equ equivalence check. Uh, verification is, I mean, running in parallel but you have some sort of confidence then you move to the next step. You give your netlist to a physical design team. Uh, what they do, they're gonna, they're gonna create pad ring, they're gonna do initial placement, uh, they're gonna plan for the power and ground uh, and different uh, physical uh, design activities. So important here is the pad ring because pad ring what essentially is that you fix where your um, input outputs would be on the chip physical location you fix. And then a uh, placement tool uh, takes that description and uh, try to place uh, different blocks of, of your uh, logic and um, do further operations. So at this point we are not going in detail. It's, this lecture is just to give an overview of um, EDA CAT tool flows. And after you are satisfied with the initial placement, then uh, what you do? Uh, reset and clock circuitry are, are very important. So very carefully uh, plan for, for the reset and clock and do a clock synthesis, clock tree synthesis as well as reset tree synthesis. Um, it's a, it's a uh, very detailed topic again, but uh, uh, mainly these uh, clock tree or reset to the synthesis job is done by the tool with the help or 
physical designer they assist the tool they put some constraints and uh, the tool then the tool they guide the tool to the to the the, the uh, synthesis uh, these are np np complete problems um, those who are not aware of np complete problems uh, uh, I would recommend you to watch my algorithms lecture where I discuss about uh, NP hard, NP complete uh, kind of problems. So these problems again fall into that category. So those tools try to optimize the design, but it's a complex problem. I mean, the problem's complexity increases as per the number of instances. Think about two billion transistor or four billion transistor on a chip uh, need to be placed. So here the takeaway is that you do uh, your uh, clock tree synthesis, you do initial routing. Um, if you are satisfied, it's fine. If you are not satisfied, then back and forth between um, you know initial placement and, and um, synthesis further. And then once you are satisfied, you have the final placement. You run the tool set again, and uh, you do a bunch of uh, physical verification checks, which include your uh, design rule checks, uh, electrical rule checks, antenna checks, uh, signal integrity checks, and all sorts of uh, checks which make sure that your physics work here. Remember, physics is that at the at this level you essentially have laid out your um, design is in terms of the uh, three-dimensional circuit, and you want to make sure that uh, the physics work. There is no uh, signal integrity issues, no DRC issues, antenna issues, and all. And uh, otherwise, your chip is not going to work. Um, if you are not satisfied, then rerun, redo it, and bunch of things. And then when you are satisfied with your final placement, you dump out the net list, you dump out the resistance and capacitance information. Uh, we call it RC, uh, in, you know, and then uh, three-dimensional geometry information. Uh, um, what are the different sizes of transistors, uh, wires and whatnot. And your net list, uh, you can dump out net list in the form of uh, gates uh, so that you can compare gate versus gate, which you have uh, at after logic synthesis stage. So you do equivalence check and you are satisfied, okay, during the physical design process, we didn't uh, accidentally change any, any logic, functional logic, our functional design is same. Um, you are good there, you have met your timing. Um, so you are satisfied here. Now it is it's sort of uh, almost uh, you have done. Now typically this, this process, the placement, uh, routing, uh, physical verification is we call it physical design or back end activities. In the same way uh, we call like RTL and logic synthesis those activities we call under front-end activities or digital design activities. Uh, need to mention that uh, after you finish all those activities, then your final GDS data um, is ready to be shipped to manufacturers, say for example, TSMC, who will take out uh, your GDS data and will do further processing how to um, Manufacture it. Basically, you created a blueprint for the chip at that level. Um, in in technical terminology or informal or formal, you may call it. People say in industry, tape out term. So you taped out the chip. Um, need to mention that I I forgot to make an arrow that the cell libraries or technology information is needed almost at every stage of the design. Uh, there might be variations that you do equivalence check at you know more stages. Um, or you do timing checks. Um, you you may do as per your you know companies. Every company they have there is standard flow. Some some companies may do multiple times equi check. Uh, some companies don't do that. So the basic idea here is takeaway is that what is the role of electronic design automation tools? What is the role of computer science algorithms here in chip design process? So essentially, 
it turns out to be that uh, tools are doing the job. An electrical engineer or chip design engineer is just assisting the tools. Major job is done by the computer tools or software tools. But think about it. How important is um, to learn how to program or you know think about if, uh, if the computer don't solve uh, these complex problems then we wouldn't be doing that so that's why the the famous Moore's law comes into picture you know you design better machines uh, high performance machine so your software tools are improved even more because now you have more processing power and the whole cycle feeds back into itself. So this was my short lecture on EDA tool set. I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, uh, if you need private lessons, tuitions, uh, you may contact me. Um, you may send me an email. We can do a Skype consultation. Uh, those who haven't subscribed Lee Professor YouTube channel I would recommend you to subscribe to YouTube channel um, so that um, you are get, get notified as soon as new videos are available. And once again, thank you for subscribing Lee Professor YouTube channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. See you again next time. Thanks. Have a great day.